Hello, everyone. Welcome to the market update for Tuesday, February the 23rd. I'm doing the update a little bit uh, earlier than scheduled. Uh, I mentioned in the last update that I was going to be out of town this week. Um, and uh, I figured uh, I'd, I'd do it early, and that way it can be posted. The recording can be posted, uh, hopefully, by the, the regular start time. So those of you that um, uh, usually are used to reviewing it at that time are able to review it. But either way, it'll be it'll be recorded, it'll be posted, and and uh, you'll be able to go through it. Um, we start off today with a little bit of a, of a pretty big sell off at the open. Um, we're managing to recover a little bit. We'll take a look at those charts here in just a second. But it's not surprising. This is something I talked about last week that as we as we were kind of grinding higher, we weren't really moving significantly higher. We we're kind of grinding higher that that I, I felt like it might take a little bit of a sharp sell-off that would trigger the buying. People wanted to buy the dip. And uh, it seems like that's what's happened today. We dipped, we dropped sharply, and then we recovered pretty quickly. It seems like people are buying the dip. We'll see if that continues or see if that if that does catapult us higher. If it doesn't, if we start lagging again, we have to worry about it rolling over and having a much bigger correction. But we, we can take a look at that or, or observe that uh, within the next day or two, probably by Thursday's update. We'll be able to kind of see what's going on there. Um, but um, I guess what I wanted you to learn out of this experience was when it stagnates like that, when it's it's not when it's not fearful when the vix isn't spiking and it's but it's just kind of going back and forth but it's still kind of grinding higher which is what we're doing it's not always a bullish sign and it can kind of trap you in it it, it shows you that uh the the buying um the aggressiveness just isn't there and you're in danger of some of these little um pullbacks that can happen it happens all the time and i point that out on the chart we can look at it we pull up the chart here just a second uh, where it's happened in the past just recently a few times uh, but as far as the uh direct alerts are concerned with the the selling today we're going to back off a little bit further even in these ranges these are just from yesterday because it updated overnight momentum is back in the hold range it'll probably move a little bit further to the left Breadth is is in the trending range. It'll probably move a little bit further to the left uh, when we up. Well, maybe not. If we if we rebound and and completely rebound today and rally higher, they might actually go a little bit higher. But we're in the trending range, meaning that we're not overbought, and there's still room for the market to continue to move higher. Sentiment is 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 moving a little bit higher. This is the 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 VIX has is, is, uh, been moving up a little bit. So. Um, we're not in the extreme range there, but uh, it has started to move up a little bit. Uh, when we look at the buy sell ratios, they've uh, come closer together, but not, you know, not significantly closer together. Um, now that could change if, like I said, if we don't rebound in in all, in all the different sectors today, we could see those coming closer together. But we're definitely just not just. What this is showing us we're not in a, an extreme overbought condition. There is still room for us to rally. Sentiment here is backed off the extreme range too, so we're looking pretty good from that standpoint. Uh, as we move into the into the charts, um, I can show you. Let's switch these to the candlesticks here. And I had I had mentioned I had shown this in the last update, but I can highlight it again here. Here was a situation where we were kind of grinding a little bit higher, moving a little bit sideways as we were trying to break out. We had this little sharp sell-off that that, uh, that resulted in this little move up. Um, let's see here. Well, even right into here, this is a real brief one that took place where it's moving a little bit sideways here and it, it dropped suddenly and then it shot up right there. So, you know, this is not uncommon to, to kind of see that, that happen. And again, we don't know. We've recovered off the lows so far, um, but it, you know, we're still early in the day. It could still slide back down if if the, the sellers are, if there's some panic selling going on or people that are freaking out a little bit, it, it could end up moving a little bit lower. We we One thing I was looking at yesterday was with the drop we had yesterday was to see if this support level was going to hold and it didn't now the next one is all the way down here and um 
you, know, you don't always have to come down to these support levels, but uh, you know, when you're kind of in this no man's land, um, you know, it, 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 it really, when you can't really see an area where you ex expect it to hold, because remember what's going on here is that you're, you're, you're seeing an area that you expect to hold and and that's what's giving you the confidence to buy is you're saying okay when a, when a stock is at this previous support level i feel more comfortable buying in right there thinking that that's going to hold and and when a, enough people do the same thing they're looking at the same thing and they're doing the same thing that's what kind of creates that support that it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy it, it ends up holding a support moves higher when you're in kind of that no man's land, you don't have a real clear area that you can focus on to to give you confidence to buy. And there's a lot and enough other people that don't have confidence to buy, then it can um, it becomes less reliable. Now again, it could be some news item that comes out that that sparks uh, aggressive buying in these in this no man's land period here or area here. Um, but you're kind of relying on some unknown force to, to kind of uh, be able to turn things around right there. So again, bottom line, it, it doesn't mean it can't reverse and hold right here, but um, if there isn't anything, any compelling reason to, to hold it there, I mean, we're looking all the way down here for it to possibly pull down, uh, drop down to. Um, now, again, I don't expect, that wouldn't be catastrophic and I wouldn't expect that to spiral this into a bear market or anything. But um, I just want to make you aware that uh, where these areas are in case in case we don't see a, 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 a follow through to the, the bullish reversal today after the gap down. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the DIA uh, didn't drop much today, and it does seem to be holding at that previous that support area right there. So we'll keep an eye on that. If that doesn't hold again, you're dropping dropping down to here. Almost all the indexes are showing kind of the same thing. Uh, most of them, though, have broken that first area of support. The Dow is the only one that held that. You can see the Qs moved all the way down to that lower area and actually dipped below it. And they're trying to hold that area there. Um, so that that's kind of a concern. Now, the Qs haven't been the leadership index. It's been the Russell 2000. but if you're looking at second leadership, it would be the the cues and and so that's concerning that that's dropped so far so fast in the last few days, just kind of falling apart there. It tells you that that risk on type trade that that um, is is kind of is kind of off a little bit. Um, now I I touched on this and warned about this uh, last week when I I talked about how the bond yields. Remember, I said bond yields are going up, and as they keep going up there's going to be fund managers that look at that and say, you know, do I really want to take the risk, uh, a continued risk on these, these high growth stocks? Yes, I can make more money if they continue to go up. But over here, I've got treasuries that have an attractive rate now that I can make a, a guaranteed one and a half percent or, or slightly less than one and a half percent. And, you know, maybe I had a, a at least, transfer money into the into that into that safety and and that might be what we're seeing here is is some money taking some profits on some of those high growth tech stocks and moving them into the safety of bonds and we see it in the in the bond chart you'll see the bonds continue to drop yields continue to rise and um it if you're looking for an explanation of, of what's kind of happened today that that's probably one of the better explanations of what's going on or likely going on um so we'll see if that support area holds. Uh, and then the IWM, it's trying to also hold on to that, this support area right here. And actually it's doing a pretty good job of holding that. But then the next one is down here a little bit lower. We'd have to look out for So uh, we'll keep an eye on that and uh, see if those those uh, continue to hold. We'll probably have a better picture of this by Thursday when we do the Thursday update. So. See what happens. Um, going through the other charts here at the chart of bonds, you can see that the bonds continue to drop, but the bond yields continue to rise. And, and it doesn't look, I mean, it, it is starting to get one thing that we do need to point out is it is getting into an extreme reversal risk, meaning we could see 
we could see bonds start to rally a little bit, yields pull back a little bit. And that's where I see, that's where I, I definitely can see where the market could bounce or rally off of this drop is that now that the bonds are reaching this extreme, they should, even if it's just a little bit of a rally like this, you know, they should get a little bit of a bounce and maybe that's enough to rally the market a little bit. Um, and, um, you know, we'll see if that, that ends up taking place. But we do want to be aware that although the trend is, is still down in bonds, that it is in that extreme oversold condition, and you're you're due for a little bit of a bounce uh, pretty soon. Uh, it would it would you know we'd assume that it, we get we'll get that pretty soon. Um, now again, you can stay extreme for periods of time, and it may just be temporary where we bounce a little bit, but um, uh, we'll see if that uh, how that plays out. Now looking at gold. Uh, gold is um, still in the downtrend. It's rallied, rallied a little bit the last couple of days, but you know you're still you still have the lower highs and lower lows. Um, you know you you'd want to break that trend. You'd like to see higher highs, higher lows to break that. We just haven't seen that yet. So the assumption is, is that gold is going to continue to trend downward until until we see it break that that cycle or that, that trend at least get a get to a higher high uh, which the, the near term one would be this one right here break above this one right here oil continues to move higher not much to to really ex expound on that it's it's continued to trend upward and still looks uh, still looks pretty strong it, it it's getting close to that extreme reversal risk area but it's not there yet so again we'd assume that oil is going to continue that trend and continue to move higher until we start seeing some of those overbought conditions the dollar is continuing to trend downward we have this bounce back in here um, but we also mentioned it looks like a it could have been a bearish abc pattern and um, it looks like you know we're heading at least down to this low and we'll see if it breaks out and continues that that downtrend continues to move lower there but the trend is down it's acting like it's wanting to go down and so we're assuming it's going to keep moving in that direction and then lastly the vix uh the vix has spiked up uh today it, it had elevated yesterday as well a little bit off the lows you know we're not we're not seeing this type of spike and i think a lot of that's because it started to rally after that that drop and so you see how it's it's moved off the highs of the day there um, but that's something to keep an eye on to see if um if that fear starts entering in and and we start seeing uh, the vix moving up um uh, significantly as the market is dropping that that'll tell you that there's some more fear behind the the selling all right. Um, as far as the specific stock, you know, I, when you're in a, a drop like this, you know, there's not a lot that I'm going to like, um, and there's probably not going to be a lot that are close to giving you confirmation yet. Um, we look under computer and technology. Uh, I think I'd mentioned this one a little bit ago. This uh, APPS digital turbine, 98 strength rank. Uh, let's switch the signals on here. I mean, this looks like a little bit of a larger ABC correction right through here. A little bit of a dip down, but it's it's trading higher than where it opened. So it could be a bullish reversal candle. So even if it ends up being down compared to yesterday at the end of today, as long as it's higher than where it opened, and particularly if it's at the highs of the day at the close, that's a strong bullish reversal. And, and very often you'll see a rally off of that. Now we're still waiting for it to go back to a buy signal anyway, so you'd be waiting for some confirmation beyond that. But that would be a good signal that, that this thing is is maybe reversing back into an uptrend if that if it ends up closing higher than where it opened. It opened down here, it dropped all the way down to here. It's currently come all the way back and gone up from where it opened. Still down compared to the day before to yesterday. But if it holds right here and closes like this, it would be a pretty strong. Uh, bullish reversal and, and you'd just be waiting for it to go back to that 
that buy signal is confirmation. Um, another one in the sector here would be this IZEA 98 strength rank. I think we've gone over this one before too. Yeah, we have because this is one that remember I talked about this. We've I've talked about this a number of times as an example that we had this drop. We had this moving sideways. I said, whenever we see a stock moving sideways, you want to pay attention to the direction it was moving in before it moves sideways. That's where it's likely to go after it's done moving sideways. And sure enough, after the sideways move, we've had this drop um, highlighted by this, this big drop down today. But again, it has the same thing. It gapped down here. It's currently trading higher than where it opened, but still lower than the day before. If it holds that at the end of the day, that's a pretty strong bullish reversal. And I've talked about this um, stock for a couple weeks now that, you know, this could be wave A, wave B, and we just need that wave C. That could be it right there. And it could be uh, ready to start another move higher. Um, again, we're waiting for it to go back to the buy signal anyway, but it, it, getting that strong bullish reversal, if that ends up closing that way today, would be a good good start to that. And um, we'll see, we could see how that looks on Thursday and see if it's starting to move back up. Uh, let's do one more here under transportation. It's one at the top of the list has a 90 strength rank. We didn't have any 98 strength rank here, but 90 strength rank, H-Y-R-E. Kind of a similar formation here where it looks like, you know, that's wave A, wave B, wave C. And if so, we're waiting for it to, to go higher. Now, this one is, is hasn't gone higher than where it opened. Here's where it opened. It, it did have a low all the way down here, and it's come off the low. But here's where it's sitting right now. So we'd like to see it close at or higher than where it opened, at least to get that bullish reversal. The fact that it's way off the lows, this is still what we call a hammer formation, which is a bullish formation, but the stronger bullish hammer is when it, it closes higher than the open. Um, when, the, when it closes still lower than the open, there's a tendency for it to retest these lows the next day, so it wouldn't be surprising if it opened down here the next day. But again, bottom line, we're waiting for this to go back to a buy signal as confirmation anyway. It's right in the middle of that hold range right now, so. It still has a little ways to go to get get to that buy signal. So, um, and if it never gets there and the thing keeps dropping, then we never got the confirmation on it. But this is one that looks very similar to some of those other patterns where we had the nice big run up right through here. Looks like we pulled back in an ABC pattern, and we could start another uptrend at that point. So, see how that goes. All right. Um, that wraps up, wraps up the update part, and, and today's update is going to be a little bit quicker, or just because of um, uh, just the, the, I'm on vacation. Um, I'm actually doing this as a to, to just try to make sure we we everyone still continues to have an update this week and and some stocks to trade. Um, but I am going to do a training today, real quick. It's kind of the boring part of. Um, Elliott Wave, in my opinion, <laughs> uh, and it has to do with with complex corrections, uh, understanding complex corrections. Um, the reason is is that you know uh, you know there there is a, a, a there is a, a explanation for these, um, and this is where the fanatics will love this stuff because they love to dive in and and look at the details of Elliott Wave and they want an Elliott Wave count with everything that they're looking at. I've told you that I'm not a Elliott Wave fanatic. I like to keep a little bit more of a balanced approach. I like to keep a simpler approach. And but I will teach you the complex correction and I'm going to teach you just a simpler way to deal with it and manage it for those that, that are like me and want to keep it real simple. So um Elliott called sideways combination of corrective patterns double threes and triple threes a single three is any zigzag flat or triangle i'm going to explain this all in a second here but um a, a single three is any zigzag or flat or triangle um 
the, and the triangle is an allowable final component of such combinations. And in this context, it's called a three. Um, a double or triple three then is a combination of simpler types of corrections, including various types of zigzags, flats, and triangles. Their occurrence appears to be the flat corrections way of extending sideways action. And that's kind of the key component for a key definition of complex correction. It, it's basically it's basically indecision that's lasting longer than normal. Um, usually your indecision is going to be a three wave move. You're going to get, you're going to get your trend and then it kind of goes into that, remember that, that kind of period of doubt of, um, or, or wondering what's going to happen next and, or what, you know, should I be buying or selling? You get, you get kind of that first little sell off, you get the bounce, you get the next little sell off tends to be more choppy, more sideways, and then you kind of continue the trend. Uh, that's kind of the normal type of correction. And um, and there's a there's kind of a flow to that indecision. You get the initial selling, you wonder if that's the buying opportunity, you buy a little bit, but it's not, and it comes back down, so that creates that indecision of that, that doubt, so to speak, between the buyers and sellers. If that doubt, though, extends longer, for a number of reasons, it could be, you know, based on overall market conditions. Sometimes the overall market will be indecisive. Uh, sometimes that individual stock, whether it be people don't know how to interpret the earnings or the expectations of growth or whatever the reason is, uh, it, it 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 has a period of doubt where it moves sideways a little bit longer. But their occurrence appears to be the flat corrections way of extending sideways action. As with double and triple zigzags, each simple corrective pattern is labeled W, Y, Z. The reactionary waves are labeled X. Uh, they, the X waves can take any shape of a corrective form, but are most commonly zigzags. All right, let's try to make sense of some of this. Um, here's kind of a visual um, explanation of this. Again, your normal correction would be an ABC, ABC. Now we've talked about how there's different types of ABC patterns. Um, I mentioned this in earlier class that you can have the, the zigzag ABC. It looks kind of like a lightning bolt. You can have a flat ABC where wave A moves back and then wave B comes all the way back to the beginning of wave A and then wave C ends at the end of wave A. So you get this real sideways, we call that a flat ABC. And then you can have an irregular ABC, which you could have a situation where you have wave A, wave B actually goes a little bit higher than wave A, and wave C can go beyond the end of wave A or even shorter than wave A, but it just kind of keep it kind of looks like an irregular three wave move, which is why it's called an irregular ABC. Regular ABCs are rare, so I don't focus a lot on those. You don't deal with those very often. Most often, your corrections are going to be zigzags or flats. But when you get into this extended sideways period, um, you can get what happens is, is you kind of get you can get these ABC ABC patterns that, that bind together, um, and that's why we call them double threes and triple threes. They're just they're just multiple ABC patterns that that kind of combine together. And if you ever look at a real extended sideways move. You'll, you'll see that they're just a bunch of three wave moves, basically. You're not getting five wave impulsive moves in there. You're getting just this real back and forth three wave type moves. Now, what connects these ABC patterns is what we call an X wave. An X wave can be, can look like an ABC pattern itself. So in a double three, what you would have is you'd have wave A, wave B, wave C. That first ABC pattern we're going to label as W. And then you have your X wave, which is your connector wave. Now, sometimes your X wave can be a straight move. We see this a lot where it looks almost impulsive, where it looks like a straight move. And that's your X wave. But the X wave can also take in, can, can also be a, a zigzag or even a flat ABC. It can be a three-wave move uh, that, that becomes that connector wave. And then you're followed by your Y wave, which is another ABC. And that ABC could be a, a flat. Usually it's more of a flat because usually these, these 
extended corrections are real sideways looking. Uh, but there is an exception to that, which we'll look at here in a, section, a second, which is called the double zigzag. Um, and that completes your Y wave right there. So you have W, X, Y, and then you're expecting the trend to continue. And that would be a double three combination. A triple three is just three ABC patterns that are connected by an X wave. So you'd have your first ABC, which would be your W wave. That's connected by an X wave right here. Then you have your second ABC, which would be your Y, connected by another X wave. And then you have your ABC, which would be your Z wave. And that's what creates a, a triple three. Now, if your head's spinning by this point, you're like me. Uh, if it's not, and you're loving this, then you're one of the fanatics. You're going to want to spend uh, a lot more time uh, studying this stuff and, and getting those those complex corrections down. But the reason why I don't I don't spend a lot of time on these or emphasize these is because most of the time your double three or whether it's a double three or triple three, it's only obvious in hindsight. It's only after that it starts to move that you say, oh yeah, that was a triple three or that was a double three. So I don't see a lot of the benefit of recognizing whether it looks like a double three or a triple three before a move, because if you're trying to trade a, a, tr a double three and you're expecting the thing to explode and take off, it could end up being a triple three and it could move sideways for another two or three or four weeks or whatever, and you're stuck. So when I see a long sideways correction, what I like to do is just draw a trend line across the top and a trend line across the bottom. And when it breaks the, the range, when it breaks that sideways range, you buy the breakout. You've heard me say a, a hundred times that when you have a sideways range like that, that breaks out, you can take the distance from the top of the range to the bottom of the range, extend that upward. And that gives you kind of a minimum target. Minimum is a key word there of where you expect that stock to go on the breakout. So the, the, some, simplistic side of me it says why try to figure out where we're at in this mess wait till we break out i know a rule of thumb that says that it should move up that same distance i've got a high probability trade on the breakout i can have a lot of confidence in and and a lot of confidence that i'm not going to be messing around with sideways movement for the next uh, three or four weeks so just like anything in trading you can make it as simple or as, com or as complex as you want to make it um, but this is an area of Elliott Wave where I, I, I fell asleep learning about it. And then I said, well, okay, I learned it. I learned how to recognize. I can dig in. I can dig into these complex corrections. I can find these W, X, Y, X, Z formations. But I'm spending a lot of unnecessary work to do it, to, to really have it affect my trading. And so that's why I'm, I'm, um, I don't I don't really pay much attention to that. Um but that is the labeling and that's how you would label it um if you're um kind of following the the official labeling guidelines there. Now I did mention that most of the time those complex corrections are a sideways move, so they're gonna be flat ABCs. Um but occasionally you'll get a, what we call a double zigzag, which these are tough because what happens is, is you have this uptrend right here, you get wave A, you get wave B, you get wave C, you can see that it looks like an ABC, and it looks like it's going to start taking off. You're expecting it to take off. It, it usually will take off off the bat. And it will show you that it's starting to take off. You'll get a move up. Maybe you get a little bit of a pullback right here. This could be a little bit of a smaller ABC right here, and it's starting to move up again. You think everything's fine. You think this is wave A of a new uptrend, this is wave two of a new uptrend, and you're in wave three, and then it rolls back over, and it gives you another zigzag, another ABC zigzag. So that ends up being your W wave on that first ABC. This, what looked like it was taken off as an X wave, and then you get that second ABC. So again, if I'm drawing this out, You know, you have this nice uptrend, you get wave A, wave B, wave C. Uh, looks like it's starting to move. 
maybe pulls back a little bit. It looks like that's wave one, wave two. And then it goes into another ABC and then it takes off. Now the good news is that double zigzags are very rare. They don't happen very often. And again, usually you don't know you're in one until it's hindsight. The way you deal with with uh, double zigzags though is that you just you have to use your trade management. You know, if I'm if I think I have an ABC pattern, this thing is starting to move up, and I think that's wave one. You know, if you put your stop below what you think is the end of wave C, that'll help you from getting killed on these double zigzags. You can even move a stop up when you have this first little correction right here. If you think that's wave one of three, two of three, and then you're in wave three of three, you might even be able to move a stop up below there. And if it comes all the way back down, that could could stop you up and keep you from a, a lot of pain there. But um but that can happen, and anytime you have a what you think is a, an ABC pattern, and then it, it kind of uh, fails a little bit, it could end up being that it's a, a double zigzag, just a complex correction. And again, remember what's driving this: it's indecision. It's and it could just be that that the stock was maybe it was coming out of that correction, feeling pretty confident at first, and then something else came up that added to the indecision, added to the the uh, uncertainty. And it it prolonged that correction a little bit longer. Now another uh, uh, kind of official part of Elliott Wave is that that usually a lot of times these. Um, these uh, double threes will unfold in two different types of of ABC formations, meaning the first ABC would be a flat, or that's more sideways. You can get your connect your connector wave, which is wave X. It could be any any type of ABC, zigzag, flat, or or irregular, and then you that might be that might be a uh, followed by a zigzag ABC. Um, now, what helps a little bit is that usually a zigzag ABC is not gonna be the first part of a complex correction, unless it's a double zigzag. So if you happen to have a zigzag ABC in the first part of that correction, then like I said, it could end up being a double zigzag, but it's, you're not gonna get a, a, a zigzag ABC, get your X wave, and then have that be followed by a flat ABC. Um, typically, your flat, and usually it's going to be a flat ABC followed by a flat ABC or a con or an irregular ABC. Um, you're not going to get too many of these flats followed by zigzag ABCs. I told you this stuff was exciting. <laughs> Another component is that sometimes you can get in the in the final component of the correction is you can get a triangle formation. Now, a triangle formation is a type of, uh, and some of you are familiar with triangles, you know, ascending triangles, descending triangles, uh, flags and pennants, and these tend to be, uh, they, they tend to be complex corrections a lot of times, and a triangle pattern is, again, multiple ABC patterns that, that usually um, or go back to back, meaning that uh, we we usually call triangle patterns A B C D E formations because you'll get a three wave wave A, three wave wave B, three wave wave C, three wave wave D, three wave 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 E, and they usually break out at that point. Um, again, you can you can look into a triangle, any sort of triangle you draw, and you can look for that A B C D E, and, and you'll find it majority of the time. I tend to just draw the trend lines of a triangle. and wait for the breakout. Now a triangle, if it's part of a double three, will always be the final part of that double three. You're not gonna see a triangle followed by a flat ABC, but a lot of times in a in a more complex uh, correction, you'll see a, a, a flat ABC 
get your X wave, your so as you be your W wave, you get your X wave, and then you'll get a triangle, which will be the final component of it, and then it breaks out. That's just a simpler way to do it. Just draw your trend lines, wait for it to break out of that consolidation, and usually it'll usually you're good to go. And this is just showing some of the different types of um, of triangles, symmetrical triangles when you have lower highs and higher lows that kind of converges. Descending triangles when you have a declining highs but you have flat lows. Ascending triangles when you have flat highs and rising lows. And the rare reverse symmetricals when you have expanding higher highs and lower lows and it expands. These are usually pretty rare expanding triangles. And they can be both bullish or bearish depending on usually the, the what the trend was going into the triangle. And this goes back to what I was talking about. The simpler way to look at this is anytime you see a stock moving sideways or you could add looking like a triangle, pay attention to the direction or trend it was moving in before it moved sideways. That is where it's more likely to go after it's done moving sideways. If I have an uptrend and I go into an asymmetrical triangle pattern, chances are when it breaks out of that, it's going to continue to move higher. If I've been going down and I move into a symmetrical triangle pattern, chances are it's going to break lower when that triangle is done. All right, so, so that's your training on complex corrections. Like we didn't have to take up too much time on those. I I I don't mean to laugh. I, I just uh, I, I'm just going through my personal experience. Uh, I, I for many of you, I'm assuming you're feeling right now like I did when I was first learning this stuff, which is man, this is I don't know if I understand this, and you know, and when you go out there and actually look for examples, it's even harder to find it because remember, it doesn't always play out exactly the way that you draw it you know uh, we, we've we've looked at this with the five waves i mean you see me kind of draw it out and i i've done this a long time to where i can see it a little bit easier um than, than probably most of you the waves but you start getting into complex corrections and so the simple simple it, you know and another thing to add to this that helps is that when are you more likely to see a complex correction i guess that's a good point what wave is most likely to have a complex correction? Wave four, right? Wave four is that surprise disappointment. It's more likely to be the one that extends a little bit more sideways. So whenever I see a long extending sideways correction, I assume it's a complex correction, and I assume it's a wave four unless I'm proven otherwise, and most of the time it's it's going to be a wave four. And so. Being able to just simplify that approach is you're still able to apply Elliott wave. You're just not you're not so focused on getting fanatical about you know is this W is this X and is this Y and now we're breaking out we're going to break out or is this another X wave and you know do we have you know wave Z before we break out. You're just simply saying, okay, that's probably a wave four. Let's wait for the breakout. I'll buy the breakout, assuming that's wave five. Because it's wave five, it may not go that far. So I'm going to have a shorter leash on this thing, a tighter stop or a smaller target that I'm looking for. And you can manage it that way. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. We'll see you. Um, I, I, I want to say Thursday, but because the way things are going this week, it could be it could be either 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 day. It could be a. I might do it uh, the next class tomorrow or maybe even Friday. But um, the, you'll at least get a recording of it um, by by Thursday. Well, I won't do it Friday. I'll probably do it either Thursday or Wednesday, so you'll have it by the time normal classes on Thursday. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Bye now.